And yesterday, Sunday the 24th of July, was my seven months booze-free anniversary, if you like. And many people have been asking me questions about this. Like, why did I do it? What was your relationship with alcohol like before? Were you an alcoholic? Do you think you'll ever drink again? How are you doing it? I'd love to do it. How do you deal with this? And I thought, fuck it. Well, well, well. It's time for me to lose my Paul Moore Talks shit solo episode virginity. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while, actually. Um, just me, just you, tuned in, listening in, watching in, whatever it is, because uh, I've been wanting to do a video on this. I've been wanting to make posts about this. I've wrote a few emails about I've just been kind of putting tidbits out there. Um, and yesterday, Sunday the 24th of July, was my seven months booze-free anniversary, if you like. And many people have been asking me questions about this, like, why did I do it? What was your relationship with alcohol like before? Were you an alcoholic? Do you think you'll ever drink again? How are you doing it? I'd love to do it. How do you deal with this? And I thought, fuck it. You know what? Let's do a solo podcast on this very subject. Now, I don't want you to get this twisted. The alcohol-free life, and again, I'm not saying I'm going to be alcohol-free for life, by the way. That's a critical thing. I don't know what's going to happen after the 12 months. I'll, like stay, I'll explain my 12 months in a second. I don't know what's going to happen after that. I don't know whether I'll, I'll ever drink again, but I thought seven months um, would be a great, just a, a, a great time to do it. Um, so we're going to dive into a few things today. I've already kind of I've already done a book on this, an audio book, which you can go to my website, paulmort.uk, or you can go to How to End Self-Sabotage. No, it's not that. It's uh, endselfsabotagebook.com. You can go there. I did an audio book on it back in 2020, actually, January 2020. That has helped actually thousands of people. So if you want to go deeper in some exercises that you can do to get any kind of self-sabotaging or actually self-soothing behavior handled. Go check those out. Um, But yeah, my number one intention here is to give you some tools and some strategies and some, maybe some leverage on uh, why this, why it might be good for you, how to do it, et cetera, et cetera. But also I don't want to kind of sound like a vegan CrossFitter. If you're a vegan CrossFitter, um, well, that's on you. I'd say I don't mean any, mean any offense, but if you're offended, uh, that's your decision, not mine. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to sound like one of those preachy people on this, which is why I, I just mention it in, in flits here and there. So why did I decide to do 12 months booze free? Well, I'll tell you a couple of things that happened late in uh, 2020. So I remember drinking on the 23rd of December, which was actually the last drink that I had. 23rd of December. Um, I remember 2019, Mac had just started working for us that year. Producer Mac, remember him? So Mac had just started working for us that year. And that year I ended up meeting him for a pint. And it was like the end of December. I was like, we'd finished work for the day. And I met him for a pint, him and his mates. And I ended up out till like 1 a.m. And I had a great time. We had a laugh. And then we we're going to do it in 2020. Didn't happen. End of 2021, I was like, oh, when are you having your mate's night out? I'll come. Of course, I invited myself. And on the 23rd, I actually had a few cans at home. I think I might have a couple of gins. And I just felt a bit shitty, a bit drunk, a bit exhausted. And I actually never made it out. And I was like, ugh. And then I felt like shit for about seven days after that. And I was like, mm, I'm not really, I'm not feeling this right now. A couple of my friends have done 12 months booze free. I know a couple of people that have been booze free for years actually. And I went to Dubai for New Year with the family. We had a nice time, etc. And we came back. And one of the things I love to do when I come back on hol off holiday a lot of the time is like focus on new stuff. So I think that actually, this is a, a free little tip for you. If you've listened to my previous podcast with my wife about why I don't drink when I'm on holiday, well, two things I love to do is holidays for me aren't just a reward for hard work, aren't just a reward for hard work. They are 
I see them as preparation and an opportunity to get ready for the next push in my life, working towards those outcomes and goals, which I think is critical for everybody, this sense of purpose. So I was working on, and the time of year, I think it was the second, maybe the third of January, we're flying home, and I'm working on my goals for 2022, my outcomes for 2022, and then working backwards, and okay, where will I need to be in 90 days' time? And I was looking at, okay, what could, what could slow me down here? What are the obstacles in the way? And Because it, it wasn't about not boozing, by the way. This is one of the keys here. This wasn't about not boozing. So my goal originally wasn't not to drink. I had a bunch of goals for other things. Personally, I wanted to, to compete in jiu-jitsu, get much better at jiu-jitsu, maybe win a gold or two here and there. I wanted to get into the shape of my life. I wanted to impact more people. I wanted to get on stages all over the world. I wanted to get the podcast going again and moving again. I wanted to grow my profile. I wanted to travel with my family. I wanted to create loads of magic moments with my family. I wanted to go here. I wanted to go there. I wanted to go to football games. I wanted to take my kids all over the place and improve my relationship with my wife and grow my team and get be a better coach and launch these different bits of my business and get a book. I wanted to do a lot, right? And I was excited about that. And I'm looking at, okay, what are the obstacles here? What are some of the things that might get in the way here? Now, obviously, as two times UK Master Coach of the Year and someone that helps people master their emotions and upgrade their thinking, a lot of people call that mindset, but I find that a bit boring and a bit cliched. And But help people upgrade their thinking and help people master their emotions. I don't particularly have a challenge getting over some self-doubt stuff. Like, I do have that, of course. Of course, I doubt myself. Of course, sometimes I question where I'm at, whether I belong here, whether I'm good enough, whether I'm confident. Of course, I question that. But I tend to be able to overcome it with action, funnily enough. And when I'm looking at these obstacles, there's a bit of that stuff. There's a bit of skill set. Maybe I don't know how to do that. But two of the biggest things that get in the way for me are energy. Energy can stop you from doing so much. I actually believe that most people don't have a time management problem. They have an energy management problem. If they they don't need more time, they need more energy. So I looked at, okay, what's going to stop me? Energy and illness. And I spent a bunch of time last year sick and tired. Of course, in 2020, 2021, I spent a lot of time recovering from the pec tear. I had some COVID issues. I had an adverse reaction at the vaccine. I got diagnosed with long COVID, which I don't believe, but that's a, a different story. Um, I spent just I spent a lot of time last year. Last year, I found hard. Clearly, we did some amazing shit. I mean, we got the book published. We grew our business. We impacted thousands of people. We sold out a fucking theater with a thousand people in. We spoke at different events. So we had a big... A big 2021, personally and professionally, but I wanted an even better, even more empowering, and even more magical 2022. And I thought the only two things are in the way here, really, are energy and illness. Those are the two biggest things that stop me. And there's a common denominator there, and that was boozing. So that was actually my first why. I've got too many other things that I'm excited about. Okay, that was decision one. Decision two, actually, decision one was what happened on the 23rd. I was just like, maybe this is not for me. Decision two was when I set my outcomes, I was like, this is going to get in the way here. This is going to fucking slow me down. But the interesting piece was even my wife, who's amazing, said to me, why do you feel the need to do that? You don't even drink. You don't really drink. That's what a lot of people say to me. You don't really drink, Paul. And what they mean by that is I actually only drink or I drank five, six times a year, usually at the end of every quarter, right? At the end of every quarter, because I love that. I love that quarterly challenge thing, the 90-day challenge thing. I love that, right? I get I get energized by that. I get inspired by that. I get inspired by the chase, the sense of purpose. I think this is actually what a lot of people lack in their life. They don't feel like they're going anywhere. They're not aiming for something. They don't have an animal to hunt, and I love all of that. So... I tend to drink at the end of one of those every one of those ninety day blocks, right? Or maybe a couple of times at Christmas, seven times a year maximum, right? So my wife was like, "Why do you feel the need to do this?" I'm like, "Well, if I look at my year and I'm blaming time and I'm looking at okay, when am I going to fit all of this in? All this stuff that I'm excited about, what?" And I'm like, "Well, when I do that, 
for the next week minimum, I operate at 20% capacity. This is what I believe that most people operate at most of the time. 20% capacity, 20% of their potential, 20% of their energy levels, right? And for the next week, I operate at 20%. 20% in my training. My nutrition's really hard. I'm dehydrated. Work feels more challenging. Getting after my goal seems more challenging. I'm more irritable. And that's like five days every quarter. Add it up, that's 20 days. Put in the extra couple of times that I might booze, that's 30 days. That's an entire month. And that's only drinking five or six times a year. An entire month I'm losing. That's without the sickness that I was get picking up quite a lot, right? You're probably talking an extra month in there. That's two months. And then you might talk any injuries that I might pick up or something, any mood swings, that all that kind of stuff. You're talking, I've lost... If one fifth of my year here, one fifth of my year just gone. So that was kind of the other part of this. So, and I actually, it's really interesting because I've wrote in my notes here, I've got notes in front of me, in that what I've found is that people go from being, ent- drunk people go from being entertaining to a little bit irritating to me then thinking, oh, dude, are you okay? This actually happened on Saturday and Sunday, actually. So this week, Saturday, I was at the UFC in in London. I took my son as a magic moment. And what I witnessed there was just more, it it reaffirmed my decision, actually, because I just saw boozed up, coked up, angry blokes doing stupid shit, throwing pints, picking fights, talking shit, being idiots. Uh, And then Sunday night, I saw a drink driver Uh, have a really bad accident outside of my house. And I'm just like, what the fuck? So, again, I don't want you to to feel like I'm attacking boozing at all here, or even people that choose to do it. I'm just sharing my experiences because so many people have asked me about it. So that's the why for me. The why is I looked at my year, I looked at what happens when I do drink, and I thought I can't have, I don't feel like I can have my cake and eat it. I can't have my cake and eat it. And actually, the big thing that I've made here is that I've just, and I actually, this is part of the why, but also part of the how, is that I feel like I've created a life that is, and again, this is created, not handed to me, created a life that's so exciting, and I'm working towards goals that are so exciting. And by the way, this is a fucking decision. You can make a decision to have an exciting life. I'm not even kidding. Even if you're in a situation that you don't like right now, you can get excited about changing it. Even if you're in a job that you don't like and you feel stuck right now, you're not actually stuck. You can make the decision to get excited about getting away from it. That's a decision. So I'm ranting here, but it is what it is, right? So don't give me that whole it's all right for you thing. I've created a life that I'm so excited about going after, a a life that I'm so excited about living that I just don't have room for booze. I don't have room for it anymore. And that feels good. So it's not that it's a demon. It might not be that I never do it again. It's not really that I did stupid shit after I drank. It's not even that I got into fights or got into arguments with my wife or kicked off or didn't come home. That was old me. I went on benders. It was all me. But I felt like, do you know what? If I'm going to live this life that I'm excited about when I set these goals on the 3rd of January, you could do this at any time. If I'm going to live this life, if I'm going to become that person, then I can't have room for getting pissed. I don't have room. And again, when I say that, it's very easy to put it in a box or a compartment of, that sounds shit, right? But actually, consider the other side. It sounds amazing. Having a a life where you don't feel the need to get drunk. Having a life where you are so excited and inspired and all of that kind of stuff that you just don't have room for it anymore. I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. So I don't feel like I'm restricting myself. I don't feel like I'm missing out. I don't feel like I am regimented. I don't feel like that at all because I've done other stuff. I haven't made this about not boozing. So one of my goals actually for the year was was not just not to booze. That wasn't one of my goals. It's not even my goal. I've said it out loud, which kind of makes it a declaration, but actually not boozing was just one of the vehicles to achieve all of my goals this year. And I'm nowhere near on those goals yet. I'm halfway through, which is also exciting. 
So, so the no room for booze is actually part of the why, but it's also part of the how. Create a life, if you want to get it handled, create a life that just doesn't have room for it. Because I actually believe that it's not the drinking that we like sometimes. It's not the drinking that we like sometimes. It's usually the way we make it, the way it makes us feel. Whether that feeling is to fit in with other people. Whether that feeling is like a belonging because everybody else is drinking. Whether that feeling is relaxation. I've actually noticed when we talk about cravings later that the times when I've wanted to drink was mad is never when I feel good. When I feel good, I don't want to drink. It's when I feel like shit that I want to drink. It's mad that, innit? I know what, I feel like shit. I feel like a car that won't start. So I know what I'll do. I know it's a petrol engine, but I'm going to put diesel in it. It's a mad thing if you think about it, right? I only ever want to drink when I feel shit. It's, in, it's interesting that. So it's actually, I, I figured out that it's not really the drinking that I like. It's the way that I make me way it may, makes me feel. So and actually, what I've also looked at is if I can't stop drinking, if I'm like, I can't say no to a drink, have I mastered my emotions? You think about that, a drink changes the way you feel. It changes your emotion that you're experiencing. So part of me is like, well, if I want to master my emotions, do I want to rely on that? And again, I'm not saying I'm never going to do it again, ever. I'm not going to say that right now. I can't say it, but who knows come December, right? So the how. One, create a life that has no room for booze. Two, understand that it's not the drinking that you like, it's the way that it makes you feel and the emotion that you experience when you have it. Now, how do we create or how do you create your own why? How do you create your own why? So for me, part of it had to be tapping into my fear of failure. Many people talk about a fear of failure, fear of what other people might think, fear of looking like a failure, fear of sounding like a failure, fear of feeling like a failure. So I actually have that too, believe it or not. I do worry about what people think. Not everybody. Do worry about what people might say. I do worry about looking like a failure, but I use that as fuel, which is why I tell people about it. So I'm declaring it because that creates two things that I like. Towards leverage, towards leverage, i.e. I'm moving towards pleasure, right? So towards leverage of, oh, well, people people will actually have a lot of respect for me if I can do that. People will be impressed by me. People will give me a round of applause. People will praise me. People will make me feel significant. And I'm okay with admitting that, right? It's kind of a nice thing to say, actually, do you know what? I am going to inspire people by not drinking for a year. Some A lot of people don't like it. But there's also going to be some away from leverage there as well. Because if I drink when I said I'm not going to, then I'm going to look like a dick. A lot of times I'm not worried about that, but I don't want to look like the guy that said something then didn't do it. Remember, one of my, one of my things, in fact, I'm wearing the T-shirt, do what you said you would. So I use that whole fear of letting people down, fear of looking like a failure, fear of looking shit, as motivation, if you like, is inspiration. So there's the declaration part. Again, that's not for everybody. Maybe you want to do it in silence. But I don't want to fail in... Pro- it's easy to fail in private, right? It's easy to fail in private. But it's not so easy to fail in public. So I use that. So I've got the... With a declaration, I've got the towards leverage. I'm moving towards being praised, being inspiring to people, being... Uh, it being in, people being impressed by it, people making me feel significant, people supporting me, etc., etc. I'm moving towards that. And with the declaration, I've also got some away from leverage. I.e., I want to move away from people thinking I'm a failure. I want to move away from people thinking I'm full of shit. So I've got two bits of leverage with a declaration again. You don't have to do it, but failing in private's easy. Let's face it. Letting yourself down is easy. Letting other people down, that's hard. That's hard. That's not for me. At least I try my best not to do that. My kids actually hate boozing as well. They really don't like me drinking. And I don't like being drunk in front of them. Again, you've got to consider this as a parent. Like, is getting drunk in front of your kids something that you want them to see? For me, it's not. It's not. It's I don't see that as being a great example, and that's what I try and live by. So, yeah, again, I don't want to sound too much like a vegan CrossFitter because I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to, if you're not interested in this, turn off. That's cool. 
So we've got the declaration. Now we've got something really interesting. We've got a little bit more leverage here. Essentially, we're looking at our reasons why. Because again, the more you understand the why, your why, the easier the how becomes. Most people are trying to handle the how. How am I going to stop drinking before they get too clear on the why? Most people's why is, well, I think I should. It's not powerful enough. A lot of people's why is, well, Paul said I shouldn't. Or my wife said I shouldn't. Or it's not big enough. So in order to get some depth into this, I would recommend that you write down all of the drawbacks of boozing. All of the downsides. and Really write them down. All of the disadvantages that it gives you. All of the negatives of booze. And you've got to write down like a minimum of 20. Right? A minimum of 20. To do this, this is your first, your, or your, your second how. The first one is declare it. It's actually, it's not. Your first one is create a life that has no room for it. Get clear on some goals. Get clear on some targets. Be working towards other things. So create a life that doesn't have any room for it. Two, declare it. Tell people. That makes it actually when we get to the people part, because this is the biggest challenge that people have, declaring and telling people that's not what you're doing or you're not doing it for a year or six months or 90 days or whatever you choose. Telling people can actually be very helpful. Say, listen, I'd appreciate your support. I'm going to do a year's no booze because here's what happens when I drink. Here's what I'm working towards. I'd really appreciate your support. Like just getting that handled straight away will handle a lot of these opinions that you're going to get. Just telling them the reason why. Because I feel like shit for a week after. I'm too busy. I'm horrible to my wife. I'm horrible to my husband. I feel like, I feel depressed the week after. It help, it, it, I, I get really anxious after. I'd really appreciate your support with this. Like just declaring that at the start is powerful. Then write down all of the negatives, all of the downsides, all of the drawbacks that boozing brings. The next piece is all of the payoffs. Write down all of the payoffs of not boozing. Well, I'll hit me goals. Well, I get better at jujitsu. Well, I'm fitter. Well, I don't get sick. What's the benefit of that? What's the payoff of that? I'll get leaner. I'll be more confident. I'll get more sex. I'll be better at sex, <laughs> right? I'll get uh, stronger. I'll um, be better at work. I'll make more money, which means I can go on better holidays, which means my kids get to experience places that I didn't. Like, write down 30 of those fucking things. So now we're starting to create away from pain towards pleasure, leverage again. Now, another how is what I've done, which is don't put too much focus on the not boozing part. Like This is what I mean by creating a life that has no room for it. My target isn't actually no booze. I have loads of other targets, and no booze is just part of the process, right? No boo It's like going to the gym is part of the process of getting in shape. Not drinking is part of the process for me to hit all my other targets. Live all these magic moments. Produce all of these videos and podcasts and trainings for my team and events and speak here and speak there and train jujitsu four times a week and compete in those tournaments and travel there with my family and go there with my wife and improve this relationship there and hire this person and give this person an opportunity. Like, those are the real targets. Those are the real targets. So I'm not focused on the not booze and I'm focused on the other shit. So now, this is the start. How do I do the week by week, the day by day, right? So you need a week by week plan, right? You need a week by week plan that obviously involves all of these targets, all of this excitement. But really, what I figured out in 2020, in that lockdown, it's not in my end self-sabotage book this because I'd already done it then was I drank for two weeks in a row, which doesn't sound, most people drink every week, maybe every Friday and Saturday, right? Again, I've got no problem with it. No, it's not, my, it's not any of my business whether you want to do that or not. But I drank for two weeks in a row, and it was the first time I did that since, well, I'm going to be straight with you, since I felt like killing myself in 2014. It's the first time I drank two Fridays in a row. And I felt like shit. I really struggled in that period. I felt like shit. I felt fat. I felt bloated. 
Um, I struggled to get through work. My energy was really low. I was a fucking dick to be around. My diet was shit. My sleep was shit. It was just shit. And I actually came to the realization that the only way reason I did it is because I had nothing to look forward to. I realized that one of my strategies, and this is what I'm going to give you, was that every Friday, and really, Friday was my big day for saying, fucking hell, I could do with a drink, right? I've had a really busy week. So what I used to do before 2020 or before that lockdown was we do Mort Family Friday, which meant that we'd go to the cinema, we'd go and climb, uh, clip and climb, we'd go bowling, we'd go to the beach, we'd go out for food, we'd go swimming, we'd go shopping, we'd do all of these things as a family. And then I realized in lockdown, obviously, that went away. And then I had nothing to look forward to on a Friday. This could be the key for you. So create weekends that you get excited about, if that's your trigger. So most people that plan with not boozing, they're just like, I'm not going to drink this weekend. I'm like, what are you going to do then? They're like, I'm just not going to drink. I'm like, you will drink. For a lot of people, it's because they're bored. There's no, there's almost like, they've got nothing else to look forward to on a Friday or a Saturday other than, oh yes, I get to have a drink this week. Again, if that's your prerogative, that's fine. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast though if it was, if that was what you wanted to stick with. See, if you have something to get excited about, it's almost like, well, of course I'm not drinking there. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Right? I'm really looking forward to doing that. So there's no need for me to get pissed. I've got something else to do. Something else to look forward to. This is part of the keys here. It's part of the key. So my favorite thing to do on a Friday, I'll not even lie. I love training jujitsu on a Friday. I love it. It keeps me out of trouble. I really look forward to doing it. It's an open mat, which basically means there's loads of sparring. So, and I'm not dreading going there. It's not just, oh, I'm stopping in tonight. I'm watching Netflix tonight. I love a bit of Netflix. Check out The Grey Man, by the way. Grey film. Book's a million times better, but the film's good. So, I'm really looking forward to going on a Friday. And after I've done it, there's no way that I'd want to have a drink. I feel fucking great. Remember, I only want to drink when I feel like shit, and that's probably the case for you as well. I only want to drink when I feel like shit and I've got nothing else to look forward to. And the next piece of this is, so my weekend, I have to have a plan for a Friday or a Saturday, but I also have to have things that I couldn't do if I was hungover. So Saturday morning, I'm always doing some of the wife and kids, right? I'm taking the jujitsu. I'm going out for a walk with them. I'm going out for breakfast with my wife. I've just got stuff going on on the Saturday that I can't get away with being hungover and feeling like shit for. Same for a Sunday. I love Sundays because I train jujitsu again. Or I take, or I go out with a family, or we're doing activities, right? It's got to be, I like to be busy. I like to be busy. I like doing fun shit. And then drinking isn't the only form of fun that I have. I've had to find other things to do, right? So that's part of the key is have something to look forward to and have the time filled. Have that weekend filled with other activities. One that you look forward to, two that you couldn't do if you were hungover. Where you're like, you know what? No, I'm not going to drink because I've got that tomorrow. I'm not going to drink because I've got that tomorrow. Or I've got that on Monday. Or my goals are just, my other goals are just too important to me to get pissed. That's where I'm at, actually. That's where I feel like I'm at. I'm like, I don't worry too much about all of this stuff other than my goals are too important to me right now. Way too important to me. So when I've had these temptations, it's been fairly easy to say no. There's been a few rough moments, but it's been fairly easy to say no. So week by week. Now we need kind of a an in-the-moment plan. An in-the-moment plan. What am if I'm going because you don't want to just be say I don't want to just be saying no to every social event. Of course I'm gonna go to the UFC. Of course I'm gonna go to Wembley. Of course I'm gonna go here. Of course I'm going to do that because I don't want to keep saying no to everything. So I'm going to have a plan. What am I going to drink? Okay, well, I'm going to the UFC. I'm with Max, so I'll just drink Diet Coke. Okay, I'm going to Wembley. I'm with my family, but it's going to be an occasion where everybody's drinking. So I'm going to take some alcohol-free beer. Okay, I've got the after party after my live show. I've got the after party. I probably want to relax a little bit. I'm going to be around people who are all drinking. I'll have an alcohol-free beer there. There's many, many alcohol-free beer options. Um, yeah, my favorite's called Asahi Dry Zero, um, alcohol-free. It's quite hard to get. In fact, let's have a rant on this. So the reason I love this is because I tasted it. My first ever alcohol-free beer was this, and I drank it in Simon Rimmer's restaurant in Dubai on New Year's Day. I thought, I'm going to have an alcohol-free beer, and I had that, and it was delicious, but I couldn't get it in the UK. The reason I love it is because it tastes nice. I had it 
It reminds me of when I committed to this. And um, it's got no calories in it, which makes it even better for me. Now, I remember I've posted about this on my Instagram a couple of times, and it works out at about £3.50 a, f- a can. And everyone's like, oh, £3.50 a can. I'm like, mate, I have two, and then I'm good. I have two. It's cost me seven quid. Normally, I'd spend a tenner on cans, and a lot of people are spending fucking 50 quid on a bag. So it's actually, and then they're eating a takeaway, and then they're eating shit the next day. It's actually very cheap when you put it in a context. It's like when people slate me for spending all that money on an ice bath. I'm like, fucking hell, I was spending a grand a month on fucking coke in 2014. You know what I mean? It's a madness. So, having a week-by-week plan and having a what am I going to drink plan. And then what am I going to say? So what, I, what do you say to people when you say you're not drinking? I'm just like, ah, I'm not drinking right now. It makes me feel like shit. I've set the goal. I've actually got a goal of not drinking this year because... I've got this going on and I've got that going on and I struggle with depression. Like, if you imagine just being honest with that. What's someone going to say? Actually, do you know why I'm not doing it? Because um, it makes me feel suicidal when I, after. What's someone going to say to that? I mean, that's quite extreme. But actually, do you know what? It gives me really bad anxiety and I struggle for the rest of the week. Do you know what? Actually, it makes me feel like shit. Actually, do you know, I struggle with my mental health, so I'm not drinking. Who's not going to support that? I mean, you can say funny shit like, dude, because I don't want tits like yours to a man. Men aren't supposed to have tits. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm going to get cancelled for saying that. But knowing what to say is really easy, and I think the best approach is just being honest. It's just being honest. Not drinking right now. Get me a Diet Coke. Get me an alcohol-free beer. What alcohol-free beer has you got? Actually, I really like the taste of this. No, I'm not drinking. I've got jujitsu. That's a really simple one for me to say. I'm not drinking. I've got jujitsu tomorrow. Ah, no, I'm not drinking. I've got training in the morning. No, I'm not drinking. I've got that event next week. No, I'm not drinking. I've got a competition coming up. Like, all of that kind of shit is easy, but I think the fastest way is just be honest with people. Like, it's interesting. So, that's it, really. That's it, the how. Create a life that's got no room for booze. Understand that it's not the drinking that you like. Be okay with declaring it and saying why. Write down all of the reasons, the downsides of boozing. Write down all of the upsides of not boozing. All the things that you're going to achieve, all the things that you're going to do, all of the money that you're going to save if that's your thing. Don't focus on the not boozing thing. Focus on the other shit. Create a week-by-week plan that you're excited about doing. Create an in-the-moment plan if you feel like drinking or if somebody says something. So what do I do if I feel like drinking? I do something else that makes me feel better because that's what I really want. I think sometimes the challenge is we say, do you know what? Especially if you're not a massive fan of going to the gym, it's going to be easy when you're like, oh, what are you going to do on Friday? I'm going to go to the gym and then you've had a hard day, challenging day. And you're like, fuck going to the gym. It's got to be something that you're really excited about doing and that's actually easy and convenient because that's the thing with booze. It's easy and convenient. And cheap, usually. So, of course, you're going to choose that to master your emotions. So, in the moment, it could be go for a walk. It could be put some music on. It could be have a sauna. It could be jump in a cold shower. It could be jump in a cold bath. It could be go for a meal. It could be, in my example, go to jujitsu. That's easy for me. It's simple. It's better than boozing. Not even kidding. It's better. It's more fun. It's better for my body. I get the same kind of feelings, right? I get the escapism. I get the feeling present. I get the little bit of feeling of nowhere else to be. I get the release. I get all of that from that. you got to find your version of that. Now, people. How do we deal with people? Well, like I say, the fastest way and the most effective way for me is to be fucking ruthlessly honest, to be brutally honest, to be radical with your honesty. That's it. That's it. Really. <laughs> To be honest. Now, I'm going to go into some of these questions now that I've got. How do you manage the triggers that inevitably creep in at the back of your mind? I acknowledge them. But again, it's easy. I want to have created a life that just doesn't have room for it. So when I get the triggers, I've got, am I going to move? Am I going to go and do this? Am I going to pick up an alcohol-free beer? Am I going to go sit in the garden again? Because I've got all those other tools, the triggers still come, but it's fairly easy to say no because I'm like, if I say yes to this, to having a drink, 
What am I saying no to? I'm saying no to being a man of my word. I'm saying no to my goal of 12 months no booze. I'm saying no to be able to have an amazing week this week. I'm saying no to hitting the goals that I said I would. I'm being no to being a great, I'm saying no to being a great example of my parents. I'm saying no to a productive day tomorrow. I'm saying no to that weight loss goal. I'm saying no to a lot of things just by saying yes to the craving. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. That. I love that answer that I've given myself. <laughs> Here's the one. How do you deal with other people who are drinkers and drinking as a habit? Again, for me, there's nothing to really deal with here. We got to consider that we spend a lot of time trying to get the approval of people who actually, if we think about this, if we think about this, we have no, we don't really want our lives to be like theirs. You think about the people that we're trying to get the approval of, the people that we're trying to fit in with, the people of our peer group. If you looked at their lives, would you really be like, yeah, do you know what? I wish my life was like yours. You wouldn't, right? So I'm a big fan of modeling behavior. I'm looking at all the people where I'm like, you know what? I'd love to be in that position one day. I'm going to guarantee that they're not getting fucking wasted on a weekend. I think the biggest challenge is we have no idea what our life, what we want our life to look like or what it would look like without it. We just get in this cycle of feeling like shit, feeling better with booze, feeling like shit, feeling better with booze, feeling like shit for a week, feeling better with booze for a few hours. That's the truth. So I don't think there's anything to deal with other than, than really actually being honest, but also my thoughts about people. People don't really care that I'm not drinking. Honestly, or, or people that do drink don't really care that I'm not. If they get triggered by it, I know why. Because it's making them feel bad normally. Think about that. A lot of people have been, I would say that a lot of people have been triggered. A lot of people have made comments or justify their behavior. No one calls me boring though. Someone's asked a question here. Do you find it, do you find personally, find being sober when others are drunk to be really bloody boring? No, I've actually had a better time because I'm not boring. <laughs> I was saying I went to Wembley. So this has been one of the challenges for me was Wembley. Another challenge that I had, and I'll tell you this story in a second. When I went to Wembley, I actually partied harder than I would if it was drinking because I fucking relaxed. I was able to fully express myself without drinking because I know that I'm not the center of anybody else's universe, right? No one really cares. And the people that have been triggered are the ones that are trying to make themselves to be honest. So A, I haven't found it to be boring because I don't have a boring life. I have a fucking exciting life. Most people that are drinking, they drink because they don't have an exciting life. So think about it like that. If everybody else is drunk, they clearly have room for a lot of booze, which means they have a boring life. That's their excitement. For me, that's not my excitement. The other 99% of my life is the excitement. So the 1% of not being able to drink is easy. Fairly easy. Now, the people that have been triggered by it, I think of one person in particular. I was at a jujitsu camp for five days in Italy, and I actually didn't enjoy it that much because... There was a big drinking culture. Everyone was just getting pissed every night, right? And one guy said to me, I went to bed at like half nine. He's like, oh, Paul, you're boring cunt going to bed. And I was like, boring, mate. You've just sat and laughed at me jokes for three hours. And I, did, I didn't lose my shit. I just said, mate, you've just sat and laughed at me jokes for three hours. And because I'm going to bed now, I'm boring. You're boring. Do you know how I know? Because when you're not drinking, you've got fucking nothing about you. You can't fucking... Sh <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's me ranting on. But that's the that's the truth of it, right? When people are trying to dig me out for not drinking, it's because they're trying to make themselves feel better. And that's the only way they know how to do it. They're trying to justify their own behavior, their own state. Yeah, so what else have we got here? Do you find it easy to go to a social situation where everyone's drinking and trying to get you to drink? Or would you rather make excuses not to go in case you came in and have a drink? This is, In case you came in and have a drink. This is a good question. But again, I feel like with all the other things in place, right, it just depends. If I know there's just going to be drinking going on and I'm happy with where I'm at and I don't feel the desire to fit in, sometimes I won't go. But if I do want to go and it's a social situation like someone's birthday or a wedding or something, I'm just, and I've been to all of those things, um, I've just got to make sure I manage my state. Like, I've just got to make sure I manage my state. Like, if I feel good before I go, I'm fine. If I don't feel good and I'm a bit fucked, sometimes I'll be like, ah, no, I'm fucking wrecked. I've got to consider the late nights. 
and things like that. What else have I got? Um, did it get easier as time went on? In a chaotic week, what if you can't find a big enough why or substitute to unwind? Well, well, it has got easier as times went on. I've kind of forgot about it. Has got easier as times went on. But also, in a chaotic week, if I can't find a big enough why or substitute, it just means I haven't planned properly. I haven't planned properly. I ha- if, I, if I haven't found a big enough why or a substitute un- uh, to unwind, I haven't planned the substitute to unwind. I haven't planned it in. So it's actually usually a lack of planning and I'm leaving not drinking to chance. I'm not a fan of leaving it to chance. I can handle it, but I'm not a fan of leaving not drinking to chance. Um, How long after stopping drinking did the strongest physical and mental urges subside? I mean, I don't think they, I think they kind of come and go. Um, But like I say, my focus isn't on the not drinking. I think this is the biggest thing. I've committed to it, but my focus isn't really on that. My focus is elsewhere. If my focus is too much on not drinking, I just think about drinking all the time. Yeah. What else have I got? Uh, Do you miss a beer in the sun or on holidays or the airport beers? Two of the best beers. I've never done the airport beer thing. I don't get it. I don't. I've never really got that. It's just not for me. I'm like, I'm not going on holiday to get fucking wasted. I'm going on holiday, again, as a little bit of a rest and a reward, but I want to come back feeling better, not worse. I don't really see holidays as escaping reality. So I don't get the holiday thing, all the holiday, like the hol- the boozing on holiday, um, or the airport beer, just not really for me. And I'm just thinking, I'm with my kids. I don't really want them to, I don't really, again, I'm such a, I'm such a big believer in environment. Right, I'm a big believer in environment and setting your environment up to win, and you become you're a, you can become a big product of your environment, right? And your mind and your body will adapt in the environment. You, I don't want my kids seeing that. It's not that I've got a bad experience with it. My dad, my dad, don't really drink either, but I don't really want them seeing that. I don't. It's not the example that I want to set them seeing me getting fucking pissed. It's just not. It's not really for me. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The beer in the sun. At home, yeah, I've missed that a little bit. I've missed that a little bit. But again, I've replaced it with other things. Other things. I'm like, I'm thinking of a time where I've been sat in the sun doing fuck all. Hasn't been that often. I'm playing footy with the kids. I'm barbecuing. I found some of that's been quite easy. Do you think you can become sober for life? I think I can become sober for life. Yeah. Whether I'm going to or not, different question. Different question. Um, I don't know. Have you changed your social life, e.g. stop going to the pub with your friends? A little bit. I don't find going to the pub with my friends that exciting. It's not that I don't love my friends. It's just I, I don't find that remotely entertaining, really. Sure, having a laugh and a banter with the lads, but you got to consider, I've got jiu-jitsu, I've got work where the banter's great. got jiu-jitsu where the banter's great. I've got the masterminds and the programs in the banter's great. I've got my WhatsApp groups, I've got my peer group. Banter's great. So sitting in the pub for me, talking shit, I mean, I, I do that here in the podcast. I've got some great friends and I've got some great associates and people that are on a mission and sitting in the pub... Just, I don't find that exciting anyway. So I suppose I have changed me. So I'm, I mean, I'm a very sociable guy. I go to a lot of places. I think that's part of the, the first bit, which is having a, a, a life that is exciting. So kind of sitting in the pub with me mates wouldn't match the other things that I do anyway. Like, it wouldn't even come close, really. Do you know what I mean? Like that feels a bit boring to me. Like, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out on that by not doing it because I'm doing things that are way more fun than that anyway. Yeah, cracking question. Uh, What do we got? How do you deal with peer pressure? I just tell the truth. I just tell the truth. I'm not drinking because of X, Y, and Z. And I know, I know that, I know that, What am I going to say here? That them trying to convince me to drink is not about me, it's about them. Will you feel better if I have a drink with you? 
what about me having a drink has fascinated you so much? But I think just handling it and telling them the truth about why you're stopping and why you're not right now and how long it's going to be for goes a long way. And if someone doesn't like that, they can go fuck themselves, to be fair. Um, what do we got? When the, when the moment comes and you think, I'd love a beer now, what do you do? Yeah. See, yeah, this is when I'll grab an alcohol free or I'll move or I'll go and do something or I'll get out of the house. Or I actually think a part of me, and this is me being super honest here, a part of me has replaced booze with food. I've got no doubt about that, right? And But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Actually, I'm in great shape right now. I feel fit as fuck. I feel strong. My jiu-jitsu's coming on a treat. My energy's fucking great. My sleep's pretty good. Yeah, my testosterone's up. Uh, my sex drive's great at the minute. Business is going well. Challenging, but well. Um, so, and, and this is an interesting one because it's about feeling great. That's when I grab an alcohol for beer. In that moment there. I've got some in the house. I keep them there. I've got cold bottles that I like. If I want something to taste stronger, I've got the alcohol-free ones. That's it. And actually, one thing I found is I've been to some amazing restaurants this year. Like, one of my goals was, you know what I want to look for? It's where I'm talking about food. I love going to amazing restaurants. I feel like I've, until I was 40, I hadn't really discovered great food. Michelin star places, highly recommended, like, just amazing food right? And I'm lucky enough to have became friends with a friend of mine, Matt Abe, uh, Matt's head chef. At, he's been on a podcast, actually. Matt's head chef at um, restaurant Gordon Ramsay. And he took me to a restaurant the other week and I, I noticed, I said, the cocktails on, in a nice restaurant are fucking incredible. Like the alcohol-free cocktails are banging. So that's an example of I'd have an amazing alcohol-free cocktail or an alcohol-free beer. That would be the moment where I did it. Um, has it surprised you I've focused events and society on drinking? Free champagne reception, but no soft drink alternative. Yes. Um, I actually think society is getting better and easier. For example, I went to the hop at Collins Authors uh, summer party. There was free champagne, free cocktails, etc. And I had to look for the alcohol-free alternatives. I had to go and ask. There wasn't anyone walking around with them on a on a on a on a platter. But the ones I got were incredible. Um, but yeah, I think there's a big focus on it. Like I had a conversation with my son, I think about this. He's fascinated with the topic right now, seeing like people acting drunk, especially after this weekend. And it was talking about christenings, like people that aren't even Catholic, never go to church, just having the christening. I'm sure it's just an excuse to get pissed and I get it. It's fine. I've got no problem with it, but has it surprised me? No, I kind of already knew it happened. I already knew it happened. Um, do you find the non-alcoholic beer help in social situations? Yes. I've got a new few question, a few new questions that have just came in. Let's see if I've got them. Oh, there we go. I've answered it. What would be interesting to hear? What was the reason you gave up totally in favor of moderation? We have a family party this weekend. I'm thinking of cutting it out altogether after this. Yeah, so I'm not very, I'm not that good at m moderation. Like even if I drank five or six times a year I still got pissed on those occasions I just feel like for me beer feels like beer feels like a quicksand for me is probably the best thing I've heard beer feels like quicksand like I'll have one or two and then I'll be in the quicksand and I find it hard to get out now again that doesn't mean I'm going on benders it's just mean like I'll get drunk I'll get drunk um and even if I'm not wasted I still feel like shit after just the payoffs on the payoffs are nowhere near as big as the drawbacks. The payoffs of not drinking are way higher than the payoffs of drinking. Like, and again, I think party has got to write that down. Gary, what do you do when you get triggered? I manage my emotions. I'm always like, right, if I feel like drinking now, like I'm not I'm not nailing my emotions. How do I relax? Um I meditate. I watch TV. I go for walks. I get massages. I have saunas. I love an ice bath. Um, again, I don't, I've created a life that I don't feel like I need to escape from. How do you celebrate? I go for nice food. I travel. I go on trips. <laughs> I do nice things. Um, yeah, listen, that's all I've got. That's all I've got here. I've answered a bunch of questions. I really hope this was helpful for you. Again, I don't want to sound like a vegan CrossFitter. Um, 
But I just think this kind of lifestyle, or at least taking a break from it, and I can't do moderation. I don't think most people can. Um, I think a lot of people like to justify their choices as well, and that's okay. I suppose that's what I'm doing here. I've justified my decision to not drink this year, and I really hope that it's been useful for you. Don't forget, do me a favor. Comment with your biggest take-home from this video or this podcast. Comment below. Give me a rating. Give me a review. Share the podcast. Give me some of your biggest insights. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope it's been useful for you. That's the whole point of me doing this. Adios.